that no, was my from your no, clap. No, no, white your clap was so okay. powerful. <laughs> I see a lot of lights flashing oh, yeah, in the yeah. background. It's my clap on. <laughs> <laughs> clap alarm. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, we're here with uh, PJ Rubel of Rubel Roasting, uh, stellar athlete, stellar coffee man, soon to be father as well. Um, yeah, and we're going to be talking about all things coffee. How you doing, PJ? Good. I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. I'm awesome, excited. man. Uh, you, you brought us donuts. You brought us coffee. This is like the best yeah. day ever. I try to take care of people, yeah. make them smile. So awesome. <laughs> uh, so we're going to be talking about all things coffee, you guys, today. Um, Britt, do you want to go over what you want to hear from him? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I'm starting, like, I I know very little about coffee. I got my first, like, pour-over thing, like, maybe two months ago, because Wes told me that I needed to stop drinking other coffee. Starbucks coffee. And, <laughs> and get some better stuff. Yeah. So I don't know very much about coffee at all. So, like, I'm at the very beginner stages where I'm like, I don't even know what's the difference between, like, a light roast or a dark roast. And then, like, I love wine tasting. Is there a way for me to figure out what kind of coffee taste I like? Okay. Um, and then my other question that I have for you is what are the differences between the techniques, like the pour over versus a French press? That kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's what I got for you. Um, I was basically want to know what type of beans you use. I, I, I know there's Arabica and Robusta beans. Uh-huh. Um, you have three on your website. The, we have Costa Rica, Ethiopian, and Guatemalan. Guatemalan. Yeah. So what brought you to decide, you know, those types? And also want to know a little bit about um, the different roasting types. Yeah. What's the difference? How, the, how does that affect the taste of it? And sometimes we, I taste coffee that's bitter. Sometimes it's not bitter. What is that all about? Yeah. Um, and how you're uh, prepared to scale up or, uh, as business increases for you. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm excited to find out uh, what is the difference between single origin beans versus like uh, a blend. You yeah. know, like I, I've heard that a lot. Mm-hmm. Also, I want to dive into a little bit about like fair trade and uh, that kind of stuff. Like, what does that mean? You see that a lot on. We actually just did a podcast with uh, Tobias Aguirre from Fishwise, and he, they're a sustainable fishing industry basically. Yeah. And he was talking about fair trade and how it's like really in the coffee industry you see it a lot. And you always see that little thing on on the side of a you yeah. know a bag of coffee. What does that mean exactly? Yeah. Um, um, and then also, where where do you get your beans? Like, what made you go with what providers you go with? Yeah. Um, and then the last question, we'll see if we can get to it. But, like, I know that there's green beans, right? Yeah. Like, when you get them, they're called green, and then you yeah. roast them. Like, what what is that roasting process like? How does you actually get the flavors yeah. out of coffee if you yeah. roast it too long versus too light? So, yeah. yeah. Oh, and I want to know how you got started, like. Yeah. How did this begin? Yeah. Perfect. So we'll start there, PJ. Yeah. Like, uh, tell oh. us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Uh, what's your background like? And then how did you become the owner of Rubo Roasting? Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I grew up in Santa Cruz. I was born there, moved away when we were like two or three and out to the foothills called Amador County, I own. Uh, grew up there until high school, graduated high school, and then moved back out here. Just a small town. I just wanted to get out of there. So I started coming out here. I actually moved out here because my uncle was really into CrossFit. And so I started doing CrossFit with him um, at CrossFit. CrossFit West in Santa Cruz by Costco. Um, and so I started there and kind of just, that's when I started um, my fitness journey and started learning about like how great community is. Um, and then from there, my wife got into nursing school um, and we moved out here, got married while she was in nursing school. And then um, we were just, I started managing out here at CrossFit Almaden um, and started that's when I started more getting into my own roasting coffee. Cause before I knew I love coffee, a little side note, my stepdad, when I was younger, I had ADHD, right. But not medicated. So he wanted to give me coffee all the time. I saw <laughs> on the news that if I drank coffee, it would like counteract, like Wait. give a more co- like more energy in it. Right. Kind of like Adderall does. Huh? Right. Yeah, so, <laughs> right? Don't you want to, like, not yeah, have more energy? So, like, I guess if you <laughs> yeah. don't have ADHD, right, and uh-huh. you get Adderall, then it's, like, your hyper energy. Right? Oh, okay. It helps you, like, kind of focus, right? So, I think that's what he was trying to do with coffee, <laughs> okay. right? And so, I was drinking, like, big old 20-ounce cups <laughs> of just black coffee with whole milk pulled into it, right? And I was just, like... Were you going I, crazy? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't blacked out. Remember. I blacked out. <laughs> uh, so that's when I start drinking coffee. And then my dad's always been to coffee. He lives in San Francisco. 
Um, and my dad's just a nerd when it comes to anything. He wants to be perfect and know everything about anything. So he loved coffee. He started researching how to like roast his own. And so then he got his own little popcorn popper roast, like four ounces at a time max. Right. And so he was doing that. And then, um, he got, he upgraded his own machine. I actually have one out back that I can show you guys. Um, it's just like a little rotisserie oven, like a toaster oven with a spinning, like, barrel in it okay um and you throw like 10 ounces of beans in there roast for about 20 minutes and then you take it out um and then you drink it so that way you can kind of make your own coffee at home fresh for yourself um and kind of learn what coffee you like and how you want it roasted um so when i went to my dad to try that it was like it almost i've never done any drugs or anything like that but it was probably the closest experience to having like a, like an episode right of taking <laughs> drugs right and i was just like oh my gosh i felt like i was floating and i'm not even exaggerating it was the weirdest thing ever um so from, it was from coffee from coffee yeah <laughs> I, I mean <laughs> i don't know if it was just Weird. like uh yeah maybe i was just like hadn't eaten anything all day and i was super dehydrated yeah. and so i just drank some coffee and like got yeah but um, from there, I was just like, man, I want to start making my own coffee. So I started roasting on my back porch with a, co- a popcorn popper for myself. Um, and so I was always drinking coffee. I always had a cup of coffee in my hand at the gym. And then people were asking me, hey, where, where do you get your coffee from? I was like, oh, I make it myself. They're like, you should sell it like caffeine and kilos. Hey, <laughs> and I was just go. like, no. <laughs> but okay, I'll start selling it to people. Because um, my whole thing was no one gets to really try fresh coffee. Like not as often as – not – a lot of people get to unless they educate themselves about it and find out about like blue bottle and stuff like that up in the city. Mm -hmm. Um, but not a lot of people get to try it. So that's when I started my mission of freshly roasted coffee just for you. Right. And so that's when I was just like, okay, when you order it, then I'll roast it. My dad's been behind me too. And we've been bouncing ideas off each other, but we always stuck with, we want it to be as fresh as possible. So that's when we started, I started roasting for people. Um, and I think my first day after I got my big roaster, which is out there right now, um, it roasts like two pounds at a time. My first day, I got like 50 orders from all the people at the gym. Oh, so cool. I'm just oh, roasting God. all this coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Just to let you know, it's like the first time I've roasted with it. <laughs> so I am learning on the go, right? So yeah. I'm learning and it's it definitely wasn't my best batches of coffee. Um, but I, I would like to say it's better than any other coffee you can get that's on the shelves just cause it's fresh. Right. And so when you grind it, you're having all those gases that are still in those beans, um, which we can go over. Yeah. But so that's kind of how it started. I just, people asked about me drinking coffee all the time for, from 5 a.m. in the morning when we coach till 4 p.m. when I'm coaching the evening classes, I always had a cup of coffee in my hand. Um, and so I want to start myself. When you so. roast, Beans here. Yeah. Does it? I, I, I can just imagine like the neighborhood's like, what the hell is that? Where is it? <laughs> do, you, um, do you like neighbors love you? Is there an aroma that was out, or is it? Do neighbors love you because it smells like coffee around your house all the time? Or you know, what's? I mean, I guess living in San Jose, your neighbors don't really talk to you anyways. <laughs> um, so staying on the low low has been a good thing for me. But um, I was living over in Campbell for a little bit for the last year um, in a house, and all those neighbors were just like are you okay over there? Because when you take the beans out the oven, it's like, have you ever seen roasting peanuts or any taking anything out the oven? There's going to be a little bit of smoke from it. Okay. So when I take them out the oven, yeah. it's just, oh, wow. right. So oh, yeah. smoke kind of flows up in the air. Um, and then the whole neighborhood smells it for the next like 30 minutes. So it smells <laughs> like coffee in the neighborhood. Um, it's not like ground coffee. It's like this, um, It smells like good coffee, if you know what good coffee smells like. If you don't know what fresh good coffee smells like, then you don't really know what it is. Hmm. And so they're just like, are you you okay back there? Is your oven broken? (laughs) What would you say? Like, you know it smells like good coffee, but to everybody else, what would it smell like? Uh, Does it smell like a burn? It almost smells like like a... it's going to be different for every bean. Okay. Um, but it smells like a, um, like a roasted, like hay type smell. Yeah. Because it's Mm. a dried bean right and we're roasting it and then once it starts to break down the sugars in the bean that's when you start to get those coffee flavors that you love mm. um and so then it'll smell like the like almost that darker like burnt sugars burnt, burnt caramels burnt, burnt chocolate type stuff gotcha so, can you actually that'd be a great place for us to go can you dive into that process of like how how do you roast beans and like what makes a certain bean taste a certain way versus another yeah so um i can also go off the how i choose my beans so i choose my beans off of there's a few things. Cupping score, um, how professional cuppers, just like professional wine tasters, score their 
wines or score their coffees. It's the same thing. Um, so I go off the score and then I go off flavor profiles. I go off the body of the bean. So it's like when you roast it, what's the body like? Um, and then I go off of, uh, different origins because I want to offer different origins because mm -hmm. different origins are going to provide different, um, varietals is what they call them. They're just different species of beans. Um, but they're all under like a lot of them are under the same varietal. And um, that just depends on where it was grown. Yeah. Where it's grown. Yeah. Where in. the plants are, gotcha. um, because they only can thrive in certain locations. Um, and then, so from there, that's where I choose my beans and my flavor profiles. Cause I want to be able to offer a lighter one and I want to be able to offer like your darker chocolatey one. And then I want to offer your fruity one. One, right so that's where i kind of went with my three different options um and i'm only be able to like sustain three different options financially because it's i just can't hold yeah 10 uh, hundreds of pounds yeah, of beans 10 different here. beans back there um and so from there i it's pretty simple actually I'll, I'll probably try and make it sound as simple as possible but you take the beans you measure them out for how much your order is right so if i have a two pound bag when you roast them they lose weight they lose about 15 pounds or 15 percent so i'll throw in like 2.5 pounds just to be safe into the roaster the cylinder i'll throw it into the oven turn on the oven um and it'll start rotating uh it goes through about three or four different processes. There's the drying out of the bean. Um, so where it can start getting cooked. And then once it starts cooking, it goes through a first crack and a second crack. All right. The first crack is when your bean is actually edible for coffee standards. All right. So for being able to brew it for coffee. So it gets to this first crack around, it, it depends how long it's been in the oven, but for me, it's around like 390 to 400 degrees. Mm -hmm. Um, and then once I hear my first crack, I have about five minutes until I hit my second crack. So you have to sit there and listen. Yeah. So it's this actual... is where I choose the profiles. Oh, it's like so an actual crack. Like once you actually all hear of it goes through first crack, it'll stop cracking for a little bit. The thing with mine is it's hard to hear. So it's, it's I have to go by smell now mm. of smell of the smoke because the smoke smell starts to change. Mm -hmm. Um, and so mm -hmm. it's a little harder for me than <clears throat> the people with the big old machines in the coffee shops and stuff like that and mm -hmm. stuff you Starbucks use, um, because their machines heated up quicker. And so their batches are like 20 minutes. My batches are 40 minutes. So it's a little, a little bit harder for me to kind of find those windows. Mm -hmm. Um, so I go more by the hear the sound of it and the smell of it. Um, and so when it first crack hits, you want all your beans to go through first crack. So you'll start hearing it pop like popcorn, oh. right? And so it'll start popping off, all right? And so once first crack ends immediately, that's around your light roast, all right? And so then there'll be this dry area where it's first crack to second crack transition, and that's your medium roast. And then once it starts rolling in that second crack, the second crack, so the first crack sounds like broken sticks. The second crack sounds like you're pouring milk into Rice Krispies. Huh. All right, so they're yeah. two like they're still popping, but they're that two. That made total yeah, sense. Yeah, all the guys are like, oh, I was like, wait, Rice I've never Krispies. done that before. <laughs> what does that sound like? Yeah. So, um, so that second cracks when you start getting your darker roast, um, and the oils and sugars start to get or excreted from it, and starts. Um, that's when you get your oily beans. Is that second crack? Okay. Right, um, and then you just let it keep rolling through that. That's when you start getting your Starbucks and your peats and stuff like that. All right. Yeah. Um, so that's the roasting process. Is it's what I first go by is smell. Okay. Because when I start to smell that grassy hay smell, that's when I know it's dried out. Right. Then when I start to smell that burnt sugar smell, then that's when I know it's about to start going the first crack. And then I'll s start listening st like closer. And then I just have my timer out there and I time it out to get my, my roasts. So how long does that whole process take? Uh, it's about 40 minutes. So it takes a while for the oven to heat up. Mm -hmm. So that's like five to 10 minutes of it. So if I go, my first batch is 40 minutes. My second batch will probably be around 30 minutes. Okay. And if I do smaller batches, so I do two pound batches for most part. Um, if I do a one pound batch, it'll go about 30 minutes for my first one and then 25 for my second one. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So when you're like doing those roasts, cause I know you have, um, explain the beans, the type of beans that you use again. Mm -hmm. What are they? You have like a Guatemalan, you have a Costa Rica, Costa Rica and, and Ethiopia and Ethiopia. And within those three yeah. origins, do you have, you have different roasts that you can do? Uh, yeah. So I have my way of preferred roasting for each one of those beans. Um, but I still want to offer the option of people to be able to choose their own. Okay. Um, I was going to say, is that like kind of your unique makeup that you get to have on the bean or, uh, 
I allow people to option, but if people mm. ask, then I'll tell them, I think this one's better at this roast. Gotcha. Um, and that's where I kind of go with the beans. I have my one that I prefer at light. I have my one that I prefer at medium. I have my one that I prefer at dark. And mm-hmm. then my flavor profiles that go along with that. And is, how did you come to that conclusion with those beans? Testing them. So okay. that they send me free samples. Drinking a lot of coffee. Drinking a lot, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of coffee. I mean, yeah. my dad, like, oh my gosh. When my dad started roasting, uh-huh. he also got an espresso machine. And the way he would taste his coffee is he'd do shots. And he had like 14 shots a day oh my God. of coffee. I know. And he would do it at 9 o'clock at night. Oh, he my God. He would do gosh. it all. He's like, oh, I still sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no, you don't. Yeah. You don't actually sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you just drink a lot of coffee. And there's some techniques. Like a pour over takes four minutes. So, while my other next batch that I want to sample is out there, then it's 20 minutes. I can do my pour over and try it out really quick. Vance, you better not get a cold. Uh, if you get stuffed up, you're screwed. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's different yeah. ways to do it, um, but I want to taste it. I yeah. want to be able to, like, as I would drink it if I were to be brewing it at home. So yeah. that's how I do it. There's a cupping There's cupping techniques mm-hmm. where you, you, like, pour. I don't know exactly how to do it, so I don't want to mess it up. But it's pretty much you put, like, 20 grams of ground beans in there at a coarse grind, so like a French press grind, and then you pour hot water into the cup for – I think one to 10 and then you let it sit for two or three minutes and then you just take a spoon on the top of it and you push it in there and just let it fill with the coffee water and not the grounds and then you sip it Hmm. and then that's how you score it Okay, Uh, and you smell it and all that good stuff. So um, that's how the cupping technique works. I'm not there yet, but gotcha. That just takes a little bit more experience or yeah. And like, yeah, a lot more knowledge for like what you're looking for. Okay. Um, I want to try it as if I were to drink it. So, it just takes a little longer, but I have time. So, yeah. Is the caffeine levels determined by the roasting? So, like light roast is, I always heard that, you know, light roast has yeah. more caffeine, yeah. dark roast has less caffeine. Is that, you're true? right. Yeah, okay. it, it's right. Um, and also, be, different beans have different caffeine levels from different um, plants it, and stuff like is that. Is it that significant of it? Is it like, oh, they're right around like five, you know, whatever, or is it? I have pretty significant. I couldn't difference. tell you exactly. Okay. I know for sure that a light roast will offer a lot more caffeine than a dark roast will just because you're roasting it and it, it's like a piece of meat, right? If you were to want medium rare, right? You still have the color and the nutrients in it. If you were to cook it well, you're going to lose some of the nutrients. So it's the same concept with the coffee bean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Um, where, like, where in your journey to do this did you decide, like, obviously you had people who were coming up to you saying, hey, you know, like, I want that coffee that you're drinking, so can you do that? But w- why make it an actual business? Like, what made you actually make that switch? Like, all right, hey, I'm going to try to turn this into a thing. Yeah, I, I've been very entrepreneurial spirited mm. with everything I do. When I was, like, 14, I wanted to go catch gophers for $5 a gopher. Like, <laughs> oh that's just gosh. what I was doing around the that's neighborhood, awesome. right? <laughs> so, like, ever since I've been young, I've always wanted to be, like, an independent worker, and I've wanted to make my own business, and I wanted to offer <laughs> – um, a lifestyle for other people and I wanted to help support other people and have like a super awesome friendly place for people to work and com- create this community and it kind of helped with CrossFit coming mm-hmm. into play with creating that community and supporting each other um, so when I started when people started reaching out about Rubo Roasting I was just like yes like I want to help you make your morning better with this cup of coffee, cool. right? And so from there, I was just like, yes, I want to spread the word. I want to spread the love. I have no marketing skills at all, <laughs> no social media skills at all. <laughs> it's all just word of mouth. And it, it's it's honestly been really hard to try to spread the word because mm-hmm. people are stuck with their Starbucks or yeah. their yeah. their Costco two pounds for $5. Like mm-hmm. that's what they're stuck with. And so like I can't get down to that scale, um, nor do I ever want to get down to that scale because I want it to be personal. Mm-hmm. And I always will want it to be personal um and so i just wanted to help have people try good coffee and if they like it they like it. if they don't like it they like their fills then so be it like yeah there's gonna be those people that love their fresh coffee and they notice a difference in their morning because it's so fresh and so they look forward to it right every morning yeah, i'm just I like yeah. rolling out of bed and i'm like oh, okay coffee yeah oh god <laughs> all right coffee when i'm sick i want coffee right mm-hmm. when i have that sore throat i always want to drink coffee when i'm out traveling Portland, anything like that. I'm like, I want to try as many coffee shops as Ooh, possible. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's just part of my lifestyle. And I, I want to try to help people that they don't really know it yet, but it could help change their mornings and stuff like that. So that's so, pretty cool. How many, how long 
In each day, how much time are you spending roasting coffee on a typical day? Some days zero, um, if I don't get any orders. Um, but, <laughs> yeah. uh, hopefully all day. Yeah. Hopefully, day. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was the dream when my dad and I started talking. He was just like, well, you're going to you're gonna have to roast day. during the day, and then I'll come over at night, and I'll roast all night long. <laughs> oh, um, so, uh, I mean, if we have to get to that point, we will, and we'll try to hire and put people in the right places to make that happen. But right now, I can easily do it. Um, just fine, um, unless I have to move and get stuck in a U-Haul. Yeah, day. yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, uh, but yeah, I mean, what was the question? Just about like how how much time are you spending roasting? Oh yeah, day? so if I I have big days, so I have subscription orders for some companies and stuff like that. I send oh, out cool. coffee too, and it's about fifteen um, pounds for that one day. Um, so that'll take me a good four or five hours to do because I hand stamp all the packages and package them up here um, and grind them if needed. Um, so that's also a little bit on top of the, the time. But So when you be talking to them, I guess that falls into my next questions. Like when you talked about before, like, yeah, if my dad's going to roast all night, yeah. what happens when you start like get more orders? I mean, have you, have you, do you have a plan of how to scale up when business starts to pick up a little bit? I mean, I, that's a great problem to have when sure. it comes. Um, but roasting itself yeah it's gonna probably be hard for time wise um but it's just gonna have to probably be teaching people how to roast and then just figuring out a schedule for everyone but i'll never go to putting coffee on the shelves no um so when it comes to scale it'll just be bigger machines um um, bigger area more people uh, yeah more people yeah just trying to because that's what makes the mission that's what makes rubble roasting unique from other coffee companies right it's like somebody orders and then you you take that order and then you go roast your beans and that's like tells people, um, say somebody is going to the grocery store, they're going to go get a bag of coffee. Mm -hmm. What are some things they should look for? Yeah. So if they don't have a real estate, you want to stay away from them. So if you go to Safeway and stuff like that, it's hard to find a roast date on the bag. You usually can find it on the bottom or on the back. It's either a little white sticker or a stamp, like Mm -hmm. a little embroidered stamp on there. Um, but looking for a roast date is the most important. Um, having whole coffee beans is important. So having your own grinder is the second challenge that a lot of people have. Um, and then, yeah, so. Why does that roast date matter? Uh, the roast date matters because when you roast coffee beans, they have the gases inside of them, the sugars inside of them. So over time, what people have said is over 14 days, they lose all, they start to lose their gases after 14 days. And those gases are. Oh, that's are, pretty fast. That is yeah, fast. Yeah. So the gases are the smell when you open the bag, um, when you grind them, the smell. Um, and it's also uh, how much solubles you're going to get out of the coffee beans when you grind them and pour the hot water onto them. Solubles. Explain that a little so bit So solubles is the coffee that that is getting absorbed into the water that you're actually drinking. Okay. Gotcha. Right. And so when you're grinding the coffee, it's creating the solubles that are getting excreted from the coffee beans that are ground. Um, and that's putting into the water and that's the coffee you're drinking at the end of it. Right. And so the law, the older the coffee is, is when you'll get your more bitter coffee. So oh. you're asking about the bitter, yeah. um, is when you'll get your more bitter coffee. Um, and bitterness, there's a lot to do with bitterness, but yeah. So if we can go to that just a second, <laughs> but, uh, so for what people are looking for at coffee stores or yeah. Uh, grocery stores is whole beans. So get your own burr grinder, not a blade grinder. That's just okay. Right. We'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but get your own grinder, get whole beans, and if you can find a roast date, if you find a roast date, that's better than no roast date. Gotcha. So, Even if it's been a few weeks or a couple of months, uh, it'll, you'll probably see two or three months. I was gonna say yeah. uh, when I was at Knob Hill the other day, I was looking at coffee, just checking them out, like yeah. looking for roast dates and stuff. Yeah. And yeah, everything was about two to three months. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. So it's, it's And you're hard. saying 14 days is when it kind of starts to lose its... Yeah. Wow. That's when the gases start to excrete. Um, yeah. So. I was funny. I remember when you sent me the first bag of coffee you sent, and it was like the roast date was yesterday. Yeah. I was like, whoa, this is oh. cool. And then <laughs> I always hear like people talk about... And I was actually talking to my brother-in-law about this, about how um, the bloom when you are doing pour over and like you get that initial bloom. And I remember there was one, the first time I ever got a Chemex and I put it in front of me and I was doing it. I had these beans. I just gotten, I think it was Verve or coffee guys. I think it was Verve coffee, but, um, it, I got it and I put it in there and it had this huge bloom. And I was like, oh, wow, that's that bloomy thing you're talking about. Yeah. Went through the bag of coffee and then no other bag of coffee I got after that had it. Like it wouldn't bloom. Yeah. Why? This is the gases. So the gases in too the old. beans, yeah, it's too old. The gases are gone. Gotcha. Um, and so like you'll get a little lift from those two to three months bags. Um, but yeah, those first 14 days is when the most gases are still encapsulated in those beans. Yeah. Your um, your bag, <laughs> when I did it, the thing almost went over the top of the Chemex. I was like, holy that's cow. That's what I want to see. Like the yeah. blue, the blue. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. 
So, um, so looking for the roast date and making sure that you have whole beans, yeah. grinding them yourself as you make your cups of coffee, right? right like, so not like mass grinding a bag yeah. of coffee because that releases all of the gases inside the bean. Almost and then it, immediately. Oh, yeah. Wow. Almost immediately. Yeah. So you're, you're basically just ruining your coffee. Yeah. And like, I do have people that need it grounding, so I'll do it because I know it'll be better than the option they're going to get at the store. Totally. Um, and so I'll grind it for them if they need it. But yeah, the, the most, one of the most important things that all the coffee critics say is in grinders, the first most important thing to making good coffee. And just cause it gives you a consistent, um, like cut on the bean you can say so that's where those blade grinders come into play where it's just like kind of cutting it as it goes that's what i have and then it'll be like super (laughs) lopsided and thick and rocks on one side and then it'll be like powdered dirt on the other side gotcha so that's why it's just the blade grinders you can't even control them so the burr grinders are two blades that sit on top of each other like this when you adjust the thickness or the coarse or fineness of it it opens or closes it all right and so it rotates like this to cut the beans and the beans just flow through it cut it at a level height um so you get more consistency with a burr grinder Awesome. Can you uh, dive in a little bit about the different types of methods to actually make coffee? So, like, we have a Chemex, you have an AeroPress, you have, um, what's the other one? French Press. press. Yep, French Press. Or just a drip coffee. Drip machine. Yeah. And uh, the AeroPress, I've never actually used myself. Okay. Um, I've just used French Press, pour over Chemex, and drips, and espresso. Um, What does it, what? Is an AeroPress like what does that look like? Is that like? where you put the you put it on the stove top and it boils water through the coffee? Um, I think the one that I saw that's a real great question, guys. <laughs> I think that's the yeah. one. So I the recently I saw, went but... to uh, Seattle mm-hmm. uh, to visit a friend, and she took me to like the Starbucks Reserve place, and I think that's how is. Did you see my story? Yeah, it wasn't that. It wasn't the one with like oh. the like the crazy looking ball and it boils. Yeah, up and, and it stuff. boils yeah. and then like it goes up and called. then it sucks back down. Yeah. And no, I was like, yeah, it wasn't. That, that was just like a show. It's yeah. like a AeroPress is like a. Um, it looks almost like a French press kind of, but apparently it doesn't let any air inside of the like a french press air will get in there as you press the coffee oh. down and so mm-hmm. i guess air is what oxidizes the coffee is that correct like it like kind of the second air touches the coffee it yeah. starts the process of like losing its flavor yeah and i guess the aeropress is supposed to keep it from doing that it like keeps all of the air out huh. i don't know i don't know either. i don't know yeah <laughs> well can you explain the difference between like a uh what about like a chemex versus like yeah. a french press or yeah. something like that yeah um so uh, ratios and time that the coffee beans are spent um, in the water, right, or in contact with water. Mm-hmm. So, like pour over is running through the coffee bean, so it's not really like sitting in there and just settling. Um, and so you'll get a cleaner cup of coffee. What does and that wh- mean? And when a the, cleaner yeah, so cup. cleaner means like when you drink it, it doesn't coat your tongue as uh. much. Right. If that makes sense. Right. And so you'll get a cleaner cup from that because you don't have as much coffee in the water. If that helps try to put it in perspective. So when you drink it, you're not getting like the coffee grounds Grounds. that are in the Mm. water, like that thickness of the water um, in your mouth. So that's where the pour overs and the Chemex come into play. The French press is like a cupping. Right, where you let it sit in the water for a certain amount of time and then you press and filter the water out. Um, but that one, so the French press is a thicker grind and it is a ratio of one to 10 or one to 12 or however you want it, right? The ratios are all preference. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's like a one to 12. So you'll do a more coarse grind. So I was four on the grinder over there for my pour over for my Chemex. But for the French press, I would go like six or seven, right? It's towards okay. coarse. Um, and so I would pour the coffee beans in there or the grounds, and then I'd pour my hot water in there. I'd let it sit for four minutes. I would cover it just to keep the heat in and whatever the freshness and the smell. And then I let it sit for four minutes and then I'll press it out and then I'll pour it. Right. And so that's going to be a ratio of one to 10. So you can get a strong cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. It's going to coat your mouth and it's, it's, it's all preference at the end of the day of what people mm-hmm. prefer. Just like a cappuccino versus a frappuccino versus a latte versus a, right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's just preference of what people prefer in their cup of coffees. Um, I feel like if I did a French press, I could drink one cup. If I did a Chemex, I could do four cups just because it's like so intense and it like is in your mouth. Like yeah. you're tasting the, co- like you're eating the coffee instead of drinking it. <laughs> yeah. Cause so. I use a French press too. And I get sometimes there's like a bottom layer of some oh, yeah. of the uh, grounds beautiful. a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you use daily is yeah. a French press. Yeah. Yeah. And you're saying you get like a, a layer of grounds inside bottom, your cup. 
Just it's not like a it's not like a thick ground. It's just yeah. at the bottom. There's eventually there's like a little bit of yeah, a little bit of coffee grounds. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So you mentioned that you um, get these coffee beans from different places. How would I know which one? To go for do i just pick and choose and just try it out yeah or so, like do certain regions have certain are known for certain type of flavors yeah i mean if i was just starting out i would just look at which one i like the f- flavor profile the best of because uh-huh. um, i offer the flavor profiles on the website underneath the coffee beans so i'll say like this tastes like chocolate and apples or this one tastes like grapes and hay do right? you so, decide that no the where i get it from does okay. the professional mm. cuppers do okay. yes <laughs> that's their job i'll let them do that <laughs> um but but yeah, so I'll just choose your preference. Um, you can ask me too if you just reach out online um, okay. and be like, "Hey, I like this kind of coffee. Like, I like Starbucks. I like Phil's. I like Pete's." Um, and so then I can help kind of better. What if I you. told you I like, um, I like Zinfandel wine mm-hmm. and I like dark beers? What would you say? What I, would your guess be for coffee? That's hard for me because I don't drink. So mm. I can't relate, but when you say dark wines, yeah. I would say a darker coffee. So I would say the Guatemala. Cool. Yeah. I'm going to try that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Any other questions, guys? Um, I'm ready to start chowing down on these donuts. I don't know about you guys. but One question I had before. Um, types of beans. So I know there's Arabica and oh, yeah. Robusta. What are the differences? What do you use? What's... Yeah. yeah. Um, so when I'm looking for coffee beans, I'm not looking for those, uh, the specific purposes or the, those things in the coffee. When you, when I saw that question, I was just like, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what the difference is. So then I started researching it and it looks like it's just two different varieties of beans. Um, the Robusta is a cheaper bean. Um, it's easier to source. Um, the Arabica is a little bit harder to source. It's more of with your independent farmers and stuff like that and in different regions. So the Robusta is in certain regions. I don't remember what it says. And the Arabica is grown in certain regions and only can be grown in those certain regions. So it's more of just like where can it be grown okay. um, and how much can you source from it. And the ones you get, do you know what types those beans are by chance? Or uh, what they I, say? I know Costa Rica's Arabica. I don't know about okay. the other ones. And why, why it's all those, region. Why yeah. those three that you have? You have, like, you know, you said uh, Ethiopian, uh, Guatemalan, Co- Guatemalan and mm-hmm. Costa Rica. Why not Colombian or Sumatra? And what's, and what's the difference between that? Just Yeah. Um, I, it's just, so when I first started ordering coffee from my original supplier, um, I just ordered what I thought would be good after I tasted it. And so I started ordering it. I was like, oh, this one's good. I'll order 100 pounds of this okay. and then I'll roast it. Oh, they're out of stock on that, right? So the far, like the company that I'm buying it from has no longer in stock. Okay, I have to find a different one. And so that's where I started kind of cycling through beans. I used to have a Columbia. Um, I had another bean before I forgot. I actually just ordered an organic one um, as well. Uh, and so I'm having a new bean coming in. It's just me trying them out. It's not really specific to region. It's just more of like, was this a good score? Is this a good flavor profile that will help make my arsenal a little bit more expand expanded? Um, but yeah, so what I do, so now I ordered from an original supplier that didn't have as much inventory. So now I work with um, a sustainable coffee supplier. So they work with the farms to uh, support them financially, help their business grow, um, help educate them and proper crops and figuring out um, how to make the crops last longer, how to have them grow stronger, less of them die. And so they work with their farms directly for all their stock um, to help sustain the growth of the business and the crops. Um, And then they help provide with shelter and roads to their farms and stuff like that. Um, So I started working with them about eight months ago. Um, and that's where I get all my beans from. And they're able to have more control on their inventory, which helps me a lot offer the same thing to people that love the Costa Rica or people that love the Ethiopia. So I can always provide that to them. What I was ordering before was just, I was running out and I was just like, I have to replace it. So, (laughs) yeah, um, I was going to ask, is that like something that, um, you have to worry about? Like all of a sudden there won't be beans available that normally you have or the way I order. Yeah. Because I can't order 300 pounds at once. Mm -hmm. Um, then I do have to worry about that because what I'm buying is these batches that they took out of the burlap sacks and they personally packed them. And so they only have 300 boxes of these, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's a bunch of people all over the world ordering them and I won't get it until next year's batch, right? And so if they run out, then I can't 
there's no way for me to grab it anymore, right? And so, do the beans that you order do they have a shelf life as well, or can you order them like you know I got these beans I can roast them anytime for the next year, or are they? Yeah, they last a long time. Okay, if, if stored in a dry um, and like room temperature area, they last a really long time. Cool, yeah. interesting, awesome. Yeah, I have um, two questions, oh, two yeah? more questions for you from some listeners. One. Is there, do you have a suggestion um, for someone who wants to make like cold brew, like what kind of coffee they should use for that? Um, I like the fruitier ones for cold brew. Okay. Uh, it's just what I've found to be the most tasty. Um, and so like if we were to choose my beans, I would choose the Ethiopia just because it has a really nice grace, grace or grape taste to it um and so when you're doing cold brew what you're doing is like the french press grind so you're doing a more coarse grind you're throwing it in a big old thing of water um i forgot the ratio that i did it was like one to eight so very small all right because you're grinding very coarse you're letting it sit overnight in this tub of water or pitcher of water or anything like that you can even do it in a french press um throw water in a french press or the french press grind and they say to keep it at room temperature that way the cold doesn't ruin like the chemical um reaction that's happening um let it sit for 16 to 24 hours depending on how strong you like it i did mine to 20 not in the fridge not in the fridge oh yeah out on the counter and then you'll press it out and then you'll have or you'll excrete it or Wherever, however you have to take out the coffee grinds, you'll take it out and then you'll have your cold brew. Then there's like good little cold brew methods on Amazon, like little machines that yeah. they have that are really easy. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I like the lighter ones. It's all going to be your preference though. Yeah. If you like the chocolate ones, which who doesn't like chocolate, then, <laughs> then go ahead and throw it. Like you're not going to go wrong, you know, um, especially with fresh, fresh beans. So Cool. Um, another question that we had was what is your strongest coffee that you make? Um, so strength is a funny, funny word for coffee. <laughs> strength is on how you make it. It's not the coffee bean itself. Um, and so it's your ratios that you okay. choose and it's your grind level that you choose. So when it comes to bitterness and acidity for coffee beans, um, the more coarse it is, the more acidic it's going to be. All right. The more fine it is, the more bitter it's going to be. All right. And I say hmm. more and more, but you're going to find your balance that you like, that you think is perfect, acidic acidity and bitterness right and so finding that perfect grind for you and then finding the perfect ratio of Mm -hmm. water to coffee for whatever you're doing so um i would say never get comfortable with your coffee until you think it's absolutely perfect and just make sure you're doing everything consistently so make sure you're measuring your water and measuring your coffee and make sure you're if you want to go that far see how long you've let it sit in your french press or see how long it took to go through your pour over um and so just find consistency and so if you want a stronger coffee change the ratio put more coffee to water um or less water to your coffee that you already have um, or just change the grind a little make it a little finer if you want it stronger cool and then the last question that we had was um where can people buy some of your products you you don't have anything like retail here because you wait until you get the order so it's, it's all online, rubleroasting.com. Um, when you order it, I'll get the order, and then I'll roast it up and send it. Hopefully that day, if it's early enough, but most likely the next day. Um, some things happen where I can't roast it that day, so I'll try to ship it as soon as possible. But, yeah, it's all online, and I'll always be um, roasted to order. So I'll never have a storefront where I sell coffee unless I am in a coffee shop and I know I just roasted this day, but if it's sitting on the shelf for longer than three or four days, I'll take it off or donate it somewhere. Is that any, is that a, a desire, a, an idea in, some, in the future to have an actual coffee shop oh, open? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It's a dream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I'll try to open a coffee shop probably in the next two years. I want to buy a house first for, for the kid and stuff like that. So, um, I'll keep continuing roasting from my house. Um, once I buy a house, I'll probably, get my bigger roaster um, and have my roast roasting set up in the backyard with my own little shop. Um, but yeah, I'll always be roasted to order. Yeah. We had one more question that kind of came through, um, kind of like a drinking team. Uh, in oh. the house. <laughs> and uh, they were asking about if there's any uh, infusion of with a coffee and stout or any kind of brew with a coffee. So beer and coffee kind of mixed together. I don't know about mixing drinks of that, but I know there is, um, so you know like hazelnut flavored french press flavored i know there's like whiskey 
flavored coffees. I, I don't, I'll never do that because I don't drink, so I can't relate to it. Oh, yeah. Do you have any questions from, from the gym? Like, anybody say, hey, do you think about mixing a stout with a cold brew with no. your brew? Yeah, I've never done it, but I mean, there's Bailey's, right? And this, uh, all that type of stuff <laughs> where they do mix alcohol with coffee. Yeah. So, um, I, yeah, I have no idea. Got it. I, I've never drank before in my life, so there's nowhere. You've never drank before? No, yeah. I, I don't know why. I just never got into that group, and then I got to the age where I was just like, you know, I'm going to stick with it. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> we, can do, cool. we can do that right now if you want. <laughs> My wife would kill me. <laughs> She's like, have a glass of wine with me. I'm like, but babe. Coffee. I, I, I have coffee. I have coffee, but I haven't drank for 25 years. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh how cool is that to say? <laughs> so Keep uh, it going. Yeah. I love it. Awesome. So, PJ, where can people find you? Like, uh, your social media and online, not stuff. Yeah, everything's Ruble Roasting. Um, R-U-B-E-L, um, not R-O-O-B-E-L or mm-hmm. L-E or anything like that. It's R-U-B-E-L Roasting dot com or my ats or instagram and facebook i have a twitter but i don't even know what twitter does yeah <laughs> yeah so <laughs> who knows i'm not even good at posting on instagram so yeah. um so yeah those are my social medias um i just i want to share coffee with everyone um so if you just reach out i can send you some free samples um i have little sample bags for people to try um questions i love questions i love talking about coffee <laughs> cool. um and so I, i'm just here to help and help you try some good coffee. So awesome. Cool. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. This was fun.